Well, hey there, and guten tag, and welcome to Munich, Germany, for this special video, the photo and video gear I actually use. I'm joined by my best friend and pastor, Justin, and tomorrow we're driving south through Austria to the Italian Dolomites, where the autumn colors should be at their apex, hopefully, and there we'll be capturing footage for Nucleus Media. This is the footage we use for worship backgrounds, social media posts, and stock footage, and we've got two full camera bags of gear with us, so come along for the ride and see the gear we're relying on for the most important shoot of the year. Okay, so let's start with my favorite piece of camera gear under $100, and that is the Peak Design Capture. And the idea behind this nifty little gadget is that you should be able to safely and comfortably carry your camera anywhere, anytime, and have immediate access to it. Uh, and by the way, links to everything mentioned in this video will be below in the description. So right now I've got the capture on my belt bag here. On a recent shoot we did at church, I had it on my hip, on my actual belt. Later this week, out hiking, I'll have it on my backpack strap. And I prefer this over a camera strap. I think for church photography as well, it makes a ton of sense. Uh, to get my camera out, I just press this button right here, and then it clicks back into place onto the next. And the plate that the capture accepts is also the same plate we use on our tripods, which is also very convenient. So the tripod we use, I just mentioned it. Uh, we're now just making a quick stop in Innsbruck, Austria for lunch. Uh, fun times just had on the Autobahn. Uh, let me show you the tripod we use. It's the Peak Design Travel Tripod. This is the carbon fiber version. And we've got two with us on this trip, one in each bag. And I really can't say enough good things about this tripod because the thing is, with sticks, you need something that's compact like this for travel. Usually that's gonna mean sacrificing height capacity, weight capacity, stability. But this little guy manages to achieve the best of both worlds. First, it's small enough to fit in this little sleeve, which then gets packed up uh, in our carry-on on the side. It's also strong enough to hold our camera with a decently heavy lens all on top of our camera slider. So a lot of weight that this little guy can handle, which is impressive. Okay, next stop, Dolomites. Let's see if we timed this trip right for those brilliant autumn colors and we'll pray for some good weather as well. So we made it to the Dolomites. Uh, the colors here are beautiful. This is our first morning. Did a nice little hike. Just finished our shoot, uh, which I think makes it perfect time to show you the camera bags that we brought with us along for the trip. We have two of the exact same bag. This is the Peter McKinnon Nomadic Backpack, 35 liter size. And let's look at a, a couple of the few features. I've had a lot of backpacks. Uh, this one is absolutely my favorite. First, we have a backpack within a backpack. So this is a section within the bag, but it also converts into a mini backpack. So if we want to go on a hike that is demanding, this morning's was not, and we don't wanna bring everything with us, or if we're in the city, we just don't need as much gear with us, bring that and we don't have to lug around the giant bag. What I will say though about the bag size is that I love it. These are carry-ons. We have never once been asked to check them. Pro tip at the airport, if you're wearing a backpack, at least on the airlines we fly with, they will not ask you, is that too big? They'll look at your roller bag, the joke is that my backpack is twice as large and twice as heavy, but you assume it's a backpack. All of our gear fits in here. Never have to check it. It's outstanding. When it comes to like setting the bags up, they have all these Velcro dividers. And so we basically get to build and section out the bags as we see fit. So this is like our lens and camera body bag. This is the drone bag. So you can see like we have a lot bigger sections for the drone. Uh, on the camera one, the sections are considerably smaller because the gear is smaller. Another thing I love about this bag are these uh, battery pouches that they come with. They have this mag magnetic flap, which has a really nice satisfying mechanism there. And what we do is to help knowing which batteries are charged, we put these stickers on the bottom of every battery. When the battery is dead, it's skull sticker side up because the battery is dead, battery is charged, other side up, which helps us know which battery to use, which is great. I'll show you the other side of the bag now. Right in here, this is kind of where we keep all of our miscellaneous stuff. So gloves, spare masks, don't need those on this trip, praise God. Uh, camera strap, mic, all the cords, gaff tape, pens, flashlight, converters, USB-C, USB-A, USB-A to USB-C, HDMI to watch Lord of the Rings, hard drives. And uh, that's about it.
All right, let's talk camera lenses now. We've got four lenses on this trip, each serving a unique purpose. First up is the workhorse lens, the all-in-one. This is the Sony 24 to 70 mil f 2.8 G Master. This is the second edition. And this is the lens that I use more than any other. When I need something a little wider, that's when I'll reach for the Sony 16 to 35 f 2.8 G Master. Two more lenses to discuss here. We've got the 90 mil Sony macro lens. And this is a very different lens from the other two. It's got a one-to-one -one magnification ratio, which means that when shooting with this lens, the subject appears the exact same size as it is in real life. Now, the other benefit of a macro lens is that this kind of lens has the ability to work with very short focusing distances. Combine these two things and what you have is the ability to capture the same subject matter, but with a completely different perspective, which is tremendously valuable for us on a shoot like this, where we essentially come to one location, but we want to capture it in as many different ways as we can. And that leads me to the final lens, which is the Sony 100 to 400 mil. This lens has a variable aperture, 4.5 to 5.6, and this is obviously our telephoto lens. And again, similar to the macro lens, on a shoot like this, gives us a different perspective. And between these four lenses, we can be standing in the same spot and shoot ultra wide, telephoto, macro, everything in between, but we can also shoot aerial. So let's talk about the drones that we brought. So this is the DJI Mavic 3 Cine, and we brought two of these guys, one as a backup, just in case. And if you saw our video where we traveled to the Faroe Islands last year, you know why we need drone backups. Uh, but the bottom line is this, this drone is a masterpiece. I mean, years ago we would travel with the DJI Inspire 2 drone, also with a backup, and we'd have these giant bags checked as oversized bags with the airlines dreadful to drag around to different locations that require hiking, uh, like today's location did. What's amazing now is that this little Mavic 3 is comparable in features and image quality to the Inspire 2. This guy shoots up to 5.1K resolution. It's got a one terabyte internal SSD and captures ProRes. It's got omnidirectional obstacle avoidance, which is new and makes it one of the safest drones to fly. It's got longer flight times, up to 45 minutes on a single battery. It's got something called OcuSync 3 Plus, which is the most advanced and stable transmission technology that DJI has. And basically that just means that you're not as likely to have your signal drop out, which was definitely a problem for us with the Inspire 2s uh, years ago. And look, the Inspires, they can do things that this drone cannot. The Inspires can shoot raw. Uh, they've got a bigger sensor, interchangeable lenses. They can be operated by two people. So one person can fly the aircraft while the other just has to focus strictly on capturing footage. So there are trade-offs with anything, uh, but this Mavic 3 is the first time where I can say that the image quality is comparable. Uh, what you won't see is a steep drop-off between the picture in this drone and the Inspires. And because of how compact it is, that makes a huge difference for us and what we do. And to that end, we woke up at 4 a.m. this morning, we drove two hours, and then hiked another hour to get to this location. So let's see what we can get. All right, man, what did you just do? Um, I was switching lenses and I, I wasn't looking and I put my finger right into the sensor of my brand new camera. It has this giant fingerprint Which on it. Which finger did you put on there? The middle finger. Oh, that one. And look, there may have been a corresponding <laughs> curse word that was it, it was appropriate for the time. But this is why you always have to have a lens kit. So we got our, which will be no use, our pen. Hey, that's a perfect segue. Pen tool. What? I said that's a perfect segue. Another thing you should pack in your bag always oh, is these. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. So a lens <laughs> cleaning kit will come in the rescue. Now you might think, what, what, what else could a lens cleaning kit be useful for? I don't know. When you put your nasty fingerprint <laughs> right on the sensor of your brand new 8K camera. Like an idiot! <laughs> so we're going to try to clean it up. If the rest of the vlog has a giant finger on it, I mean, look, now you know why. Bienvenue à Paris. I have had cheat sheets now for German, Italian, and French on this trip, and uh, I am Canadian. I took extended French through the 10th grade, but that was a long time ago, and conjugating verbs is only gonna get me so far here. Uh, here is one tip, though, for traveling in Paris. It's the world's most visited city by tourists, and the French maybe don't have the most friendly of reputations, 
simply saying bonjour when you first interact with a local really does seem to make all the difference. Uh, anyway, we just got here, checking out the Eiffel Tower today, trying to catch some good light at sunset. So let's finally now talk about the cameras we brought with us on this trip. You've already seen the lenses, so you can probably guess that we're not shooting Canon. We've got two cameras with us, not including the drones. We've got the Sony FX3 and the Sony Alpha 1, which is this guy right here. And really, the only reason we brought the FX3 with us was so that we could film us shooting with the A1 for this YouTube video. So uh, just wanted to get that out of the way. We don't normally have both. The Sony A1, though, is a beast. Uh, for the longest time, I've shot with two camera bodies, the Sony A7R4 and the A7S III, one for photo, one for video. Um, both great, but kind of each a specialty camera. The Alpha 1 basically takes them both and puts them together into one body. 50 megapixel photos, 8K video, dynamic range and low light is amazing. Full frame, it's basically perfect. What I will also say, and why I love Sony, is that irrespective of your budget, they've got great options for camera bodies at every price point. You know, if you are on more of a budget, but you really value image quality like I do, I'd recommend checking out the new Sony FX30. It's under $2,000. It's got a Super 35 sensor, so it's not full frame like the FX3, but the image quality is amazing. Shoots most of the same codecs as well. Super compact. If I had to compare, Canon is like that kid with all the potential in the world, dripping with talent, and they always find a way to mess it up. Sony, on the other hand, they're the sibling that's like the underdog, the overachiever. They've had to work hard to get where they are. You know, and here we are, Team Sony. I've had enough of Canon's broken promises. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice. You can't get fooled again. <laughs> Remember, links to all of the gear mentioned in this video is in the description below. I'm thinking also about doing a video or two dedicated to how I color grade and how I edit my photos. It's all pretty fresh in my mind from this trip. So if that's something you want to see, let me know in the comments. Of course, hit the like button, subscribe, and thanks as always for your time, attention, and trust. We'll talk soon.